and welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. Today is going to be a special episode because I'm going to be making a book review. Today's book review is for Breaking the Code, Five Steps to a Life-Changing Software Development Job by Bobby Davis Jr. Bobby founded his first company, the Custom Software Consultancy Cortex, in 2002 with just $500 in his account. He has since grown into a multi-million dollar business. His second effort, Advanced Fraud Solutions, now runs in almost 1,000 financial institutions across 48 states. Bobby also runs the Color Foundry Bootcamp, where he has successfully placed hundreds of his software development students in high-paying jobs across the industry. So, this book is yet to be released by June 23rd, 2020. And I am really grateful that Bobby actually sent me a copy beforehand so I can take a look at it. So, let's get into it. With 178 pages, the book is very short, which makes it really easy to get into and interruptions do not affect you so much. And between the introduction and the conclusion, we do have the contents of the book divided in three main parts. The first one is why coding. The second one is the five steps to a coding career where most of the content is located. And part three, the first job and future success, which works like a some sort of conclusion and uh, after steps after reading the book. So Bobby starts with an introduction and telling us this tale of himself talking to a group of students and basically telling them that mm, probably the next Mark Zuckerberg is sitting in a classroom like this right now. And at the same time, he's telling them that when any other career can help them achieve success, Software development is the one that is going to maximize the opportunities for them to actually get into a successful life. The introduction also touches the subject of the modern economy and how the service-oriented jobs are overwhelming the market against the manufacturing jobs. He then talks about how you can actually have access to a very lucrative career and job by dedicating yourself to solving problems using software and particularly co-programming and coding. By the end of the introduction, Bobby talks about why he founded Coder Foundry and how its mission is to place the bright, the talented, the underutilized individuals struggling in the job market and place them in positions where they can finally thrive. And now it begins the actual contents of the book with part one, why coding? And this part works for me like a extension of the introduction, sort of, in the sense that it's detailing why uh, he reached to this conclusion that software development is such a great career for anyone willing to pay the price to learn how to actually code. Bobby doubles down on the fact that service jobs are overwhelming the manufacturing jobs today. And what this means for the reader, which is basically that coding and programming are a great opportunity to thrive in the current economy. The next section is called Chapter 2, What is Coding? And this section basically tries to translate in the more general sense what coding actually means in society, not just um, from an IT point of view. Um, basically, coding is talking to a computer in a manner that the computer can actually understand um, follow along your instructions because um, you don't just want to say hello to a computer. You want the computer to do something for you. Um, probably if you are actually programming a computer or coding on it, you want the computer to actually do something very specific that you don't find uh, anywhere else maybe. 
And, and this is where the first part finishes, pretty much doubling down on the introduction and uh, arguing the case of programming and how important it is not just for you or for the people doing the actual coding, but for the society as a whole and why the impact of software development is so great on modern society. Part two, the five steps to a coding career. This is the great section where most of the valuable content resides in. So since the introduction and part one are dedicated to basically achieve two things, and one is to uh, talk to the reader and tell him or telling her that he or she can actually achieve success as a programmer, as a coder. You don't really need any special talent. You don't really need to be born uh, in a special way or have um, anything specifically just for coding. Anybody can learn how to do it. And that's the beauty of it. It doesn't have uh, uh, a gatekeeping uh, system like, uh, for example, maybe you want to become a, gym, a, a gymnast, uh, maybe a, a high um, performance athlete. You need to train even bef before you are even a, a, a grown up adult, maybe from childhood. And in this case, you can start your coding career as late as, as your 60s or maybe even 70s. Uh, there is not really a limit on age and uh, Bobby agrees that um, you are not limited by your age group or by your generation to do the job. So part two is dedicated to the five steps to a coding career. And the step one, learn the right stack. So Bobby seems to be a .NET developer. Coder Foundry is teaching web development using the .NET stack. Uh, the .NET stack belongs to Microsoft and it's a Microsoft dedicated technology. If you work with Windows, if you work with Windows servers and Azure Cloud, um, you are going to feel in, in your element here. So although I am not a .NET developer, I used to be way back in the day and I'm talking back to 2004 uh, in that year, .NET development was all over the place. Uh, yet, uh, in my honest opinion, way back in the day, I do not know, I ignore what .NET is is uh, is today. But way back in the day, it was really hard to work with. Um, the leading of the company was in somebody else's hands, and it wasn't really open. Uh, for external systems and it's, it was really hard to work with any other system that weren't Microsoft owned. Uh, yet, I guess that that may change in the future and probably did because I'm talking about 2004 and that's <laughs> almost eight, uh, 20 years ago, maybe almost. Um, so it's, it's been quite some time. Uh, but uh, he mentions and made the case, Bobby makes the case that uh, the .NET stack is the most um, demanded stack in the, in the job market. Uh, he even uh, shares that most of the time you're going to be hired into a company that requires the .NET stack. That's why he's teaching .NET. And the promise of .NET is that by learning the stack, that's the only stack you are going to ever need to learn. You can do web development, you can do desktop development, servers, site development, command line programs. Uh, I already know that you can do uh, video game development with, with C Sharp. And basically, uh, instead of using Visual Basic, like way back in the day, today you just learn C Sharp and learn how to use the IDE for it, that is Visual Studio. And you are free to do whatever you want, basically. 
and Bobby dedicates his efforts at Coder Foundry at teaching you web development. So Bobby is an abo- uh, uh, is basically advocating for the use of .NET as his main platform, and he's basically um, making the case of choosing .NET as your starting stack. Yet I um, I guess that the beginner is going to have a hard time choosing a, a starting stack. Yet the truth is that once you learn one stack, um, learning a new one is not as hard as the first one, because most of the basic concepts like classes, like variables, like loops, um, like um, even advanced stuff like uh, regular expressions, all those concepts uh, are pretty much the same. Just the syntax change tends to change a little bit. And I do remember that I just saw some a little bit of code um, where Bobby actually showed us this, that coding something in two different programming languages seems to be pretty much the same. So it's not going to be a hard uh, work for you to pivot from .NET to another thing. And .NET is great for learning how to program and coding, actually. So that's the first step. Learn the right stack, at least at the beginning, uh, with the option of jumping into a different stack. Maybe you want to develop websites with a Python backend or maybe a Node.js uh, stack, probably. Uh, whatever you want to do, learning .NET seems to be like a, a, a very useful stack for finding jobs. And it's not limiting you to just that. So you are not marrying uh, .NET uh, to the end of your day. So don't worry about it. Step two, choose your school. Bobby mentions that you have a lot of options to learning how to code. And the first one that many people look into is obviously video tutorials and probably YouTube is the main first option for a lot of people. This happens because it's free. This happens because um, being a video website, uh, the, the likely that you find something useful on it is really high. There is a lot of tutorials there. Um, yet I do think that most of the free options and free tutorials on YouTube don't really deliver on the promise of teaching you how to code. They probably touch uh, one thing useful here and there, uh, but the truth is that uh, students really are looking for uh, a structure, a path to follow, and most of the work needs to be done in that aspect on the free tutorials. Basically, tutorials are just that, are just a, a, a one video, one thing kind of deal. So the structure shown there is, is basically nothing compared to uh, a video course, which is basically the, the second option. Video courses on websites like Udemy, Prosite, and uh, what used to be lynda.com is now LinkedIn Learning. Uh, those websites... Uh, allow you to sign in and subscribe to courses that basically do belong to each other and are grouped by um, course structures uh, and playlists. So basically, um, you subscribe to these courses and you follow along and they even give you not just the videos, but exercises. They even help you with tools. They even help you with um, source code to follow along the classes. And basically, these exercises allow you to practice what you are learning. And this structure is what is actually adding the value missing from the free tutorials on the Internet. Free tutorials require way a lot of more work, not just to learn, but to find sense into the actual uh, tutorial video. And the video courses allow you to just get into it and consume the course and learn at your own pace. Yet Bobby mentions that this perk of learning at your own pace may be even a trap 
because you may get into courses that you never watch or never finish, or just you um, uh, take the course one day, uh, let, let it alone uh, like a couple months, and, and then you, you try to pick it up again, and you just forget what you were studying in the first place. And no accountability for missing out the next day of learning. And obviously one of the others, uh, the main um, uh, school type that he's going to choose, obviously, is the boot camp because he founded one boot camp. And obviously the, the presence, the personal attention that a teacher or a guide can give you, you are not going to find that on a video course. Uh, obviously, having a person in front of you uh, asking you questions, asking you to practice what you had learned, and guiding you through the steps and whatever hiccup you may have or may ever, or whenever you get stuck, you know that you have that person there to help you get out of the stuck process and just keep learning. Step three, build a portfolio. So building a portfolio is something that Bobby actually pushes forward a lot on this book. And the benefits are very clear, yet not even I am doing it right now because I am still on the process of actually learning. And building a portfolio is going to be one of the most useful tools during the recruiting process. Looking for a job is going to be way easier. So the portfolio is going to become not just a bragging site where you can just share a link with your friends and show them what you have done during your learning process, uh, but a portfolio with valuable projects is going to allow you to show this recruiter, show this business owner that not only you know how to build stuff, but that you already have built stuff and useful for businesses. And it's from the actual action of building this portfolio that the next steps and the rest of the book is basically basing on. Because with this portfolio in your hands, you can actually talk about it in the next step and work with a recruiter in the post next step. Step four, talk about your code. So Bobby talks about how important it is to have a portfolio in the previous step. And on this step, he doubles down on that. He basically tells you that when you are looking for a job, you are looking to get interviews, if you send a link to your portfolio and your portfolio does have these projects, the recruiter can see a project and say, you know what? This is a good, um, this is a good uh, bug tracker. This is a good blog, um, which are projects that he develops during the bootcamp. Uh, then you can actually start talking about your code and how you build that tool instead of answering uh, plain random coding interview questions and white whiteboard questions also. So the recruiter is going to look for how do you know how to code and how much do you know how to code. And probably the recruiter is not somebody that codes himself. But if you show him a project like, for example, a, a, um, a ticket system maybe or a bug tracker, you can start talking about the bug tracker itself. And then you're going to find yourself talking about the code you already wrote. So that is going to take the interview into your control because obviously you are going to start explaining what you already did to somebody. And that's just going to put you automatically in the position of an expert. So that's what the step four is all about. It's a really interesting step. So let's move on. Step five, work with a recruiter. So in the past, programmers were pretty much long wolves. They were very sought after because of their skills. Uh, but those days are long gone 
nobody does anything alone anymore. At least not something that gets released uh, with enough speed. Because um, one person projects are fun and all. But most likely than not, if you want something that is going to be touching a lot of hands and is going to be getting the sights of a lot of pairs of eyes, then you are going to need to work with a team. So uh, rec you need to work with a recruiter in the sense that if you are looking for a job, a recruiter is going to filter out uh, not just the candidates for those to fill in those jobs, but he's going to look for the jobs to get you into them. In order for the, for, to make the job of the recruiter easier for you is that you need to send him or her your portfolio, uh, an updated curriculum of what you can do. And if you are working on side projects, you can actually add that too. And basically, work with your recruiter in the sense of allow the recruiter to be able to sell you to the company to sell you to the spot, and he is dedicated to get you the best salary uh, that he can negotiate. So the recruiter is going to find you the jobs, and the companies are paying the recruiter on with their money, not yours, um, in order to uh, facilitate this service of finding people fit for the, for the positions. So uh, that's what you have to do. Work with your recruiter. And you may think that you can do this um, on your own. Uh, yet the truth is that Bobby touches the fact that most of the jobs in the job market are not even published. And if you don't have access to all the job positions, because recruiters get them first, and by the time you get to know about the position, the position is already filled with one candidate that our recruiter uh, got access to. So you are pretty much playing at a disadvantage if you don't work along with recruiters. Part three, the first job and future success. So Bobby talks about how important it is that you just take this first job. Uh, there is a lot of scams out there, but most likely than not, if you are working with a serious recruiter, you are going to find the first job to be uh, not very tempting. Yet, it is a good idea to just stay the first job and try the waters and try to develop your skills while doing the job. And he touches um, the idea of uh, maybe it's not going to be your dream job, the first job you get after the bootcamp. Uh, yet, you are going to learn just enough to ascend to a better job later. So it is important that you take this first job because if the recruiter gets a rejection on your part, most likely than not, he's going to mark you on his database or her database and it's going to be ho even harder for you to get another job or the job you are actually looking for. So... Uh, don't be picky the first time, just take the first job. Uh, and then we do have the chapter of specializing your free time. Uh, once you get a job, Bobby mentions that it is a really good idea that during your free time, you dedicate it to actually learn about the job you are doing and about other programming languages and expand yourself. Don't get comfortable just working with one stack and although your work your work is fully committed to one stack maybe or you are a, a web developer that just works with uh, c sharp on the on the dot net framework uh, that is well well and good but maybe learning another stack of web development may prove to be useful in the future because it's going to allow you to be flexible. It's going to allow you to get involved in other projects on different stacks and bring your skills to other teams. So uh, learn, specialize in your free time. 
And the next section, the next chapter is Communication Rocks. Uh, and this part is going to be a little touchy for me because I don't talk too much to people. But the truth is that um, Bobby is on point on the communication issue that I have at, at least. And he mentions that there are two kinds of developers and they are not separated by skill. They both do the same job. They both do the same quality level on the job. Um, and on one hand, we do have the lone wolves, the, the people, the grumpy coder that doesn't like to talk to people. And I have to admit that I used to be like that, and I hope I'm not anymore, yet I don't have a job to actually try that, but never mind. Uh, and this coder is basically just a shut-in that doesn't share information because he is afraid of losing his job or her job to somebody else. Because if I teach what I all I know, then that other person may actually be able to uh, to take my job. And that's just not true. But anyway, communication rocks, and that's the second kind of developer, the rock star. And the rock star is not uh, a person that codes very fast or that does these uh, crazy algorithms. No, uh, he's just basically someone that loves to share the knowledge that loves to help other people. And everybody loves to work with him or with her. Why? Because whenever they have a problem, they can just ask and receive uh, valuable information or just stay out of uh, the pit or not be stuck anymore. So the Rockstar Coder is basically a person that shares the knowledge. Uh, most of the time they like to create videos uh, video tutorials, uh, they do manuals, they do maybe even podcasts, who knows. And those people try to share the knowledge and they are really good to work with because they, are, they become pretty easily one of the leaders of the development teams. Since they talk to everybody, they get involved with the code of, the, of a lot of people. And since they get asked uh, from different people, then obviously they already know the pains of the software and more likely than not, they are going to be able to help the team as a whole and as an individual. So these are very valuable people. And Bobby mentions that it's a good idea to become a rock star coder uh, rather than a, uh, a shooting that just uh, is grumping alone in, in a cubicle. And more likely than not, the promotions are going to come for those kinds of people that loves to share knowledge and show and sh and share uh, the productivity boost from having such knowledge. And finally, uh, the last chapter is stay committed, which is basically uh, the mantra of self-discipline of don't quit and just stay committed to it. And eventually it's going to work. Probably you are not going to see the end of the tunnel or the light even. Uh, but he promises that if you stay committed to the craft, uh, you are going to be rewarded. And I have to say that that is actually true. So uh, this is the end of part three, the first job and future success. And finally... The book ends with a conclusion and a sh really short note and description about the author. And the conclusion just closes by encouraging you to get into coding. And the book basically sells you the idea of becoming a software developer, a programmer, a coding monkey, you want to call it like that. And uh, the book does a really good job about it. It doesn't show almost no no code actually just a little example of comparing uh, a couple of sections of code uh, and they are pretty similar uh, between them anyway so the book works as an introduction to the idea of working as a software developer and that there is really high demand and that obviously at least in america the 
the amount of of capable software developers is not satisfying the demand and the demand is keep growing and the offering is not <laughs> reaching it. So I guess that if you get into coding right now and start to learn right now, uh, you are guaranteed to reach a, a part of this, of this big market pie. So the conclusion is yet to work, learn how to code, build something, and building a website, uh, maybe even a web application or building your portfolio is going to is going to be a really good start for you. So I really recommend this book. It's a short book. It's an inspirational book. I would call it even um, a self help book. Uh, and obviously, it concludes with the invitation to join uh, Bobby's Coder Foundry Bootcamp. Um, there is a link on the end of the of this podcast on on the on the on the podcast notes for this episode uh and i guess that's it uh thank you for listening to the end of this episode and see you next time <laughs>